everybody. How are you? Um, let me turn this on here. And it is good to be here today, Friday, January 21st. <laughs> Where did it all go? So fast. Let me get my comments on. And make sure that you guys are all here. There we go. Noella from Quebec. Okay. Um, today is going to be a little off the beaten path. Uh, I'm going to have a little interview with Pokey that I pre-recorded at the end of Craft Napa. And it's funny because I just kind of looked at it quickly. I'm like, I was tired and so was she. And then also I'm going to talk about uh, the next project, which I am very, very excited about. And I'll tell you why when we get to that. Also, I'm going to talk about International Quilt Weekend, which is mid-March, uh, which we um, we didn't celebrate this last year because I don't think a lot of people were celebrating much last year. But we're getting together a really super cool program for you guys. So I am super excited about that. Okay. Libby! I'm going to show you again when I did not Libby's class. Also, I want Libby to see. It was called Embrace the Vase. So I sewed it down, Libby. Yeah, there it is. I want to put some buttons on it and things like that, some like small mother of pearl. But um, this was Libby's classic craft Napa. It was a blast. And remember, I showed you Mary Kay's too and how cute that turned out. And I think the thing that surprised me so much about this class, Libby, is that you work in such bold, colorful fabrics and stuff. And then now this whole lace element, which you were speaking to me because I am also a Cindy Needham devotee. And then see this lace, I even did some stitching through. I think I was doing that in the class. The only thing I had a little hassle with Libby was the um, depth of the rim of the vase. So I had to take my Bernina and really uplift the, the um, presser foot uh, power. So I love it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Robin says I should make a bag out of it. I don't know. So, okay, here we go. I have gotten just a couple little emails to show today, but I was so excited that Kyla... Um, well, Kyla, I'm going to pull up a thing that I pulled up on Wednesday and she was working on her, um, little heart and she's, and remember I said that she said, I don't know, I don't think I like you. And then she kept just adding more and more. And that center is a Pekingese stitch, which we can do on Monday if you'd like. Uh, she got it from Sue Spargo's book, but it's also in the book that we're working with. But now let me show you this, guys. When you look at it and you go, I don't like you very much, take a look at this. Yeah. Now I think I'm having a love affair with you. And so what is going on here? Basically, Kyla is working with the bones, or and then she started infilling. And I believe we've done every stitch there except the Pekingese, which is the green and the pink. And then I am not sure we have done that outside stitch. Although, I've told you, yeah, we've done those V things, so that's no big deal. You can do that. So it's just a matter of keep adding, keep adding, keep adding. Absolutely love this. So thank you for sending the follow-up on that, because to me that was just absolutely stunning. All right. And then... Here is Mimi Cats, and it's a little bit of a blurry resolution, so sorry about that. But um, one thing I wanted to point out on this, two things actually that I would not have thought of. I love those flower wreaths that we've been doing, and I've just been doing leaves and berries, and then look how she's thrown some lazy daisies in there. Okay. Also, that center grid, she does not have a formal circle around it, but she has French knots. So I think the beauty of this whole process is that um, 
you can just take these basic stitches and it goes on and on and on until kingdom come. So, you know, the more books you can get, the more exposure you can get, the more you can add to your piece. So uh, speaking about the heart uh, that uh, Kyla did not embrace, she got inspiration from the book that we're using. And I just want to show again my prayer flag that I did for Pokey when she and Patrick got married. And I too was taken by that heart that's in the book. And I came up with this. And actually this morning when I thought, okay, I'm going to show that again. I think I've gotten a lot better at stitching. That kind of has some funkiness to it. So you just keep practicing. You just keep getting better. You just keep getting better. And there you go. So speaking of pokey, uh, again, John's coming in. Am I, he says it's coming in weird. Yeah. Uh, John just said Facebook is breaking up and we don't know why. But John, it does all compress together, doesn't it? Yeah, on the recording it does. Oh, sorry people. Okay, so let's go let's go see what two people look like at the end of craft now. <laughs> May I please introduce Pokey Bolton? So here we are for me, the end of Crap Napa. I know, we're we're at the close. We've got one more day left, but it feels so good to finally be in person again. It's, oh, just, it's been too oh, long. Oh, and we're outside right now, thus no mask, no because mask. everybody has been so good. We are vaxxed, boosted, everything, masks indoors, all the precautions. And so it felt very safe for everybody who came. Mm -hmm. And we like, we like Patrick. He's passed the test, yeah, right? This is my new husband and he's been a helper and has been, he's right got there. strong arms. He's been carrying oh everything, God. sewing machines. People have a lot of equipment. He brings it in for them and he's, he's funny. Now this year was not without its challenges. No, it wasn't without its challenges for sure. I mean, I didn't, I was with this Omicron variant, it's been very nerve wracking yeah. in terms of the numbers and um, the stress around it and people not feeling safe. And that's why I try to limit the classrooms to 15, um, definitely a lower number, um, mm -hmm. spacing everybody out, taking all the precautions that I could, making sure everybody was vaccinated before they came, showing proof of vaccination before they came. Um, and But I have to tell you, Alex, the thing that was so surprising to me and was fun for me after two years of not being in person yeah. was that everybody here was so happy. Grateful. Beyond be gratitude. Yeah. I mean, and, it, and the fact that it was smaller and made it a much more intimate experience I agree. and a more a, a deep dive into creativity and what they were trying and more time with the teacher. So for all the stress I went through, to I get loved to, it. it just kind of worked out. It, it was the absolute best. Okay, now as far as teaching goes, now you can run around to classrooms and this and that. What class surprised you? Or is there anything special in your mind that happened this week, scholarships? That's right. Okay, so we a few things happened. We had a new teacher, Sheila Frampton Cooper, oh. who was incredible, incredible. And I limited the number of machines in the classrooms. There was a lot of movement in the rooms and she was able to get around to everybody. Secondly, I felt this was a year to make um, lemonade out of lemons and you know if we were going to be a much smaller situation maybe this was an opportunity for a scholarship program so i was able to work with sarah trail who founded this um uh, sjsa mm -hmm. Say um, what social that is. justice mm -hmm. sewing academy and get some students in who are in the program who are budding artists who may want to break into being professional artists in this industry um sewing mixed media quilting and so this is an opportunity for them to take a class that they otherwise might not have financially been able to. Well, and on top of it, in um, Latifa's class, there were two gals, and it was it was a class I would be challenged to take. I mean, piecing. Right, the glam clam and the bias applique. Yeah, yes. that's, that, one's, that one scares me. And then, <laughs> these kids were kids. I'm an old lady. These, <laughs> these, <both> these, <laughs> these young women, it was their first time they've ever quilted. Yeah. And they're like going, oh, and I'm like going, oh. Yeah. And then one person says, well, maybe your seam should align. And I'm like, no, there's not a hole in it. Let's live with it. It's wonderful. And I think they got bit by it, but man, they were starting yeah. intermediate plus. 
Yeah, no, it's, I think it's true. I think that's, I mean, that's another takeaway from this event. It was, it was a great way for me as a producer of it to see people who didn't know very Anything. much. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And how to work a machine and, and do this. And I have to offer thanks to Meisner Sewing. I was going to go there, right. And Thoth um, Sewing Machines, Thoth and Viking Sewing Machines, because they just were so giving mm -hmm. um, with their machines this year and letting, and, you know, they brought like over 40 machines for people to play with. So. Right, right. Well, I've had a ball. I, I've had three days, two with Joanne Sharp, one with Libby Williamson. I had a ball and I'm so Toby, happy to hear that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And so anything else you want to put out there in the universe or not really? Uh, yeah, I mean, now, now that I've had this, a chance to sit as people, um, you know, check in to ruminate about what I want this year to be like, I think we're going to move Craft Napa to March. That's not definitive yet in 2023. So that uh, it's, we're a little bit less of the COVID, right. the flu and the flying scare. Um, and then I'm going to be doing a lot more intimate retreats in the art barn and two more online, um, uh, Craft Napa events. Okay, and where can somebody find you on the internet? CraftNapa.com. Okay, well, you guys, it's been a blast. If you weren't here, you missed something special. So I can't wait till next year. Thank you, Alex. We got to work taping around this. Yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> I like that. that. <laughs> so thanks, everybody. Bye. I was sad when she said it might be going to March because I can't think of a better birthday present than what I have experienced every year being at Craft Napa. I, it's just the absolute best. So uh, I also want to promote not only her, you know, uh, in-person events, but her online events I did last year, Craft Napa. I loved it. I loved being in my home in my space and she mailed off boxes and all this she does not leave one rock unturned so pokey i hope you are um recovered <laughs> from one event giver to another and pokey told me she would tell me as soon as possible about the venue change one of the challenges is that this hotel is in the middle of napa and the rates are uber high as you get more into the high season and so that was one of the reasons she was in january was so that at the hotel we weren't having to spend an arm and a leg so she's got a lot to work through but i'll tell you what right now um if there's anyone i put my money on it is pokey bolton okay so let's talk about what we're doing next, all right? Uh, first of all, it will start mid-March for International Quilting Weekend. It's always the middle weekend in March. And at TQS, we have a lot of really great things up our sleeve for you. And we're going to hang out and play with you all weekend. One of the things, and we're going to have tons of giveaways. One of the things we're going to do is Bernina's given us a 500 series sewing machine that somebody is going to win. Um, R&K, owners of Quilter Select, they're giving over $650 of a rotary cutting ruler package thing. Uh, we're, heading, we're hitting up all the vendors that we know and love, and we just want it to be fun and games. Well, I'm going to do a sew along live on Saturday. It's mid-March, and I'm, my calendar's over there. Just look, it's like 17, 18, I don't know, it's in there. Saturday and Sunday. And Ricky is going to be doing something on Sunday. And he is still ruminating on what he's going to do. But I think he's kind of landing in like the top five tricks he uses or something like that. Well, I'm going to take advantage of Saturday to kick off our neutrals class. And it's interesting. Well, let's take a look at some neutrals quilts and, and what some of your pre-assignments are. All right. This is, uh, I had a neutrals book. It's out of print. It's probably... You can get an ebook through um, a C and T, but it's not necessary for what we're going to be doing. Um, this actually was from my baby book, and I think that this is kind of a springboard for where I'll be going. Um, much more complicated. What we'll be doing? I'm going to be incorporating piecing and applique. Hopefully on Monday I'll have a picture I can show you. Okay, I didn't want to show it today because I'm so close to having the bars all pieced. Um, this is Neutrals. This is by Pam Vieira McGinnis or Pam Kitty Morning. And this pattern is in the Neutrals book. So um, 
wait a minute, Libby, that Sunday is your birthday. I guess I'll have to buy my own cake, cupcake. Me? Oh, really? <laughs> International Quilt Weekend? You, you were so good to me. And my balloon is still flying. Okay, back focus, back focus. Um, so this is Pam's, and I want to point out a couple things here. There's a lot of taupe in this, kind of the yellow beige. And that has shifted to more gray neutrals these days. And the important thing in doing a neutrals quilt is that you want um, both beiges and grays. And I've got some examples here of fabric I'm going to show you because basically I'm going to send you on the big world's, the world's biggest scavenger hunt right here. Um, this is, oh, this is one of the first neutral quilts I ever made. There is not a pattern for it. And it has kind of a cute story. Um, I was sitting in church. It was in Pinole when we lived in that area. And I got a tap on my shoulder. And Deanna said, I'm going to be a grandma for the first time. And I'm going, is that the good news or the bad news? And she said, oh, it's the good news. And then I turned around. Yay. I turned around. And then she tapped me on my back again and said, will you make a quilt for the baby? No, that's what's going on in my brain. No, I won't. <laughs> and so I just, I didn't answer. I turned around and don't you know, the sermon was on sharing and giving of your gifts. <laughs> so I got a spanking. <laughs> so I said, okay. So then she says, this is what I want. Uh, Deanna, her whole family's Hispanic um, from, Me yeah, from Mexico. And um, she wanted a Mexican prayer. It's kind of like a rote prayer that they say. And so I said, okay, here's the deal. Um, she did beautiful calligraphy. I said, you do the calligraphy. And then grandma Estella did the embroidery and, um, the quilt turned out beautiful, but I was so taken by this quilt. I thought, well, I've, I've got to make one for myself. And so that's where this came from. And she redid the calligraphy. Uh, Estella redid the embroidery and um, his angels watching ever by your side, covered in peace and love as you and he abide. Um, my big regret with this quilt is I should have kept the language in Spanish. I should have done that. But what I want to point out is that I was teaching the neutrals class one time and somebody had just gotten from taking... Um, Ellie Sienkiewicz, and for those of you that don't know, she's a Baltimore album expert, and she wanted to do Baltimore album blocks appliqued on a neutral sampler. Note how in the center of this, it has a very low profile as far as uh, light and dark. Very, I guess I say low vol volume now. And then it gets more jazzy as it goes to the outside. You can prepare this sort of fabric for applique. You just want to push it back a little bit, okay, and not get such light and dark contrast. Uh, perhaps this is my, oh, this one actually did not make it in the book. It's in a centerfold, you know, what they call a, a, a beauty shop, but beauty shop shot, <laughs> but somehow the pattern got nixed from the book. But I want you to see what's going on there as I talk just a little bit more about fabric, and I'm going to do this again in my two hour class that weekend in mid-March, but I'm going to take it much further. I want you to note how there's grays, how there's topes, how there's different size and scale of print, and how there's white. I think all of those components are super important. This is my favorite quilt from the book, and you can see there easily it's topes and it's grays. So, you're, we are going to, of course, we're going to have a kit. Of course we are. But um, neutrals are tough to gather up because there's only one or two good neutrals a year. Now, there seems to be more nowadays, but I want you to go before March, start digging in your stash, stash see what you've got. The, the fabrics I run away from in this case are the white on whites, where it's the muslin with the printed um, white on top. I want to, when I look at the fabric, see something interesting going on. So let's take a look at some of the fabrics that I have here. 
um, that I'm actually working with right now. All right. So, okay, good, Lisa. I'm glad you have been collecting. All right. So this is a, a fabric of mine. I worked with Mimi. She went to college with me and she would help make my fabric um, desires come to tr come to fruition. I love this one because it's got different kinds of grays in it. It also has white. It's not a super definitive print. Okay, this one I would say goes towards the gray tones, all right? This one goes more towards the taupe tones. And that might be super jarring for some of you. For me, it's making my heart go pitter-patter. And I'll show you how to fix the jarring part if it really bugs you. I believe this is one of Jennifer Sampoo's new ones that may have come in that one bundle that we did. So and it's got a little metallic on it. And then, wait, uh-oh, where'd the rest of the stuff go? Huh. Let me grab another one here. Oh, it's right there. Here's another gray one. Okay. Now, I want you to note that when you look at this, you've got different size and scale of print going on. I love my polka dots. Okay. But if this is, oh, here's another one. All of these are in this new quilt I'm working on. Kind of, whoa. Okay, if this is jarring to you, this is the sort of piece you're going to want, wait, here's another one, want to start seeking out. It's what I call a bridge fabric, and you've heard me talk about that many, many times. This is a piece of fabric that was from one of my collections, and I purposely wanted to have the grays, and I wanted to have the topes in it. And you can see by putting that in, it kind of helps pull the whole thing together. Here's another one that was from one of my collection, had birds on it. Same thing. I wanted to have the grays. I wanted to have the topes. And then, of course, the light, medium, and dark. There's my little birdie tail right there. Right there. Um, this one was from, um, God, which I think this might have been my first line with RJR. And I wanted to make sure that while this was gray, there was some taupe in there. Let me hold it up and see if I have to. There, you can see that there. So the truth is, fabrics like these that I'm showing you are like hen's teeth. Just straight up, they are. This was a subtle one that I just got at Honey Run up at Chico. And it kind of swings in both directions, both grays and taupes. Okay, and then look at this geometric one. So if you squint your eyes and look at this, nothing looks the same and you've got different size and scale of print you've got different um um different colors lights and darks i like to keep it very light uh, like i would never go this dark but boy i sure like that dark popping in there okay so as i started sewing oh we are going to have kits and we're going to call it jump start kits but one of, there's two fabrics I used a lot of, and they will be in the kits. And you can either order the Jumpstart kit. I think we're going to do a Jumpstart kit, kit and then a plus one. And I think this will be the plus one. This grunge fabric, probably a lot of you own it, is fan frickin' tastic because it's got the grays and it's also got the topes in it. Can you guys see that? Beautiful. So it too helps pull all of this together. And then the other fabric that I used a lot of is the grunge that's got both the gray and the taupe in it, but not the polka dotty ones. We can get this. We will get this. Don't freak out. Um, and I'm the, I'm trying to figure out how much of that we have to order at, as the add on. And I'm getting there. I'm getting there now. It's been a while since I've sat down at my sewing machine in my studio space. And I know a lot of you have had a really hard time doing that because I get letters from you. We've all been kind of frozen. I got a text from Laura Nouns yesterday. She's sitting down at her machine. She goes, finally, I'm sitting in my machine. Yesterday, I was sitting at my machine and all of the lessons that I teach when I'm teaching piecing came flooding back to me. All the min minute little details, 
I like to think of it as how Sally Collins used to teach every little thing. And in this, in this quilt, in the building of this quilt, I will be going basically back to ground zero. And so I would say the quilt is going to be, um, I keep looking at it. Maybe Monday. <laughs> um, it's going to be a competent beginner or a nervous Nelly intermediate. So I'm going to go over everything. And the reason I'm telling you this is that because if you have friends that are, you know, fairly new to this game, get them in this class because not only will they be learning light and dark value, they'll be learning size and scale of print, but they're also going to be learning all the minutia that goes into making a pieced quilt. Oh yeah. And applique. Mm -hmm. This thing's going to have it all in it. So I ask you to please pass the word. This will be starting mid-March. All right. And um, in the meantime, Kristen and I are going to multiple vendors and putting together fat quarter bundles. And again, it's going to be called a jumpstart kit, meaning you're going to have to bring in some of your own stuff. So start calling your stuff and, and be be brutal. I mean, be brutal. Start pulling out those neutrals that you think, huh, I wouldn't know how to use you otherwise. Well, this is it. Mary Ellen Hopkins, the late Mary Ellen Hopkins said many, many years ago that if one or two great neutrals come out of season, you're lucky. And that is the truth. And I think I've shared before that one of my favorite prints of all that I worked on with Mimi was this bird one. And it took, it took, uh, we're looking at a bird butt. Okay. Um, this thing went to strike offs, meaning they send you, we send it back, we send five times. And it was the least seller of the entire kit. And it's probably one of the best fabrics I've ever been involved in uh, producing. Yes, John. Okay. If you find something you like, just get your, okay. If it's a fat quarter, grab it. Okay. If it is a, on a bolt, I get a third yard. Okay. Unless it's something spectacular where it has both the colors in it, the grays and the topes and get yourself a half yard. Well, no, no, that's not necessary. Now this is a, this is a scrap quilt for sure. For sure. Okay. Um, yeah, there we go. Joanne, it doesn't matter. The thing is super, super scrappy. Um, oh, also there's white. Oh, also there's white fabric in it that we will be providing to in the kit. So, um, nervous Nelly, new phase for Quiltopedia, nervous Nelly, nervous Nelly intermediate quilter. <laughs> you know, I think, I think we're all starting to relax a little bit and, um, fall in love with the craft that I've been involved with, you know, for four decades. And my goal in doing this, in addition to connecting with you and us all getting through this together and bringing another element to TQS is that I want, I, my, on my tombstone, though I won't have one, I want it to say she grew the quilting community. That's what I want. And I, I commission you to do the same thing. If there's somebody around you, get them in the fold. Okay. And I'm super excited about this. I will work on it today and get that sewn together. But because there's going to be applique on it, they, you will not see the whole thing sewn together. So I'm really looking forward to this next project. On Monday, we'll do the Pekingese stitch. And um, let me see. Kyla found it in Sue Spargo's book, but it's also in the book that we are using. And then the other stitch I haven't done yet that I'm kind of interested in trying is just like a split stitch. So I'm kind of excited about that. Um, Oh, you're welcome, Karen, for my interview with Anne Hazelwood. Uh, reading the third of series to second and waiting for the first to come. Okay. That's funny, Joanne. Um, Mary Ellen Hopkins was on Simply Quilts. She was a show person. She knew how to deliver. She knew how to... Um, just bring it down to grassroots level. And usually when you're hosting, you're, you're interacting with people. And the second time she was on, I said, Mary, because there's time 
codes, especially when you're on network TV, time codes. I say, okay, Mary Ellen, Mary, uh, Mary Helen, just have at it. When I touch your back, wrap it up. And she did. And she had the whole floor to herself. She ran the show. Okay. Nancy, thank you so much. I, I really do. I try. Okay. So um, there we go. I'll see you Monday. We'll do some more stitches. And this is going to get drawn out a little bit. And that's fine. That's fine. Start digging. Start shopping. And I'll let you know as soon as we have something. And also, remember this, what I'm doing here, is brought to you because you support, you, um, support the quiltshow.com which is basically 50 bucks a year, which is the best bargain you can possibly get in quilting today. Oh, the other thing that Kristen wanted me to say is that when you are a star member, that means you're subscribing, you will have first shot at the neutrals kit. And then if you're not subscribing, then you get second shot because we have to make it absolutely worth the value for the people who pay and support us. So we love you, we appreciate you. And, um, Mary Daniel, go back and find that interview with Ann Hazelwood. Go find it. It's all here. It's not going anywhere. Okay. Have a great weekend. As soon as we hang up, I'm going to go sew that last row together. Ooh, can't. <laughs> Bye-bye.